Hi, everyone. Susan Gerbeck here from Psychics Explained. I'm recording this on July 14th, 2024, and it is the day after an assassination attempt of our ex-president of the United States of America, and no psychic predicted it. That could have been very helpful, don't you think? Seems like maybe they should have a psychic on staff there in the Secret Service to let us know. Uh, but uh, no, you know, if you need somebody to find your hat, you want to hear about grandma <laughs> has uh, um, is contacting you to let you know she's watching over you. No problem. But a psychic can't seem to be able to predict an assassination with any specific specificity. Sorry. All right. So strange mood I'm in today. Um, the um, New York Times put out this article. It's Modern Love. Now, it's a column that's in the New York Times. I think it's weekly, and they have a different person each time who writes a story about romance. Okay. And they're very charming. I read these all the time. I'm not a romantic type of person. I'm a sentimental type of person, but I'm definitely not romantic. But I, I do like these stories. They're kind of fun. So one across my path yesterday, it's called The Psychic Who Predicted My Romantic Future. And then the tagline says, for a millennial with financial burdens, would a home have to be a house? That's the question that's asked. So this is published on July 12th, 2024, for the New York Times. The reporter is a woman named Christine. Dean Sita. Now I'm going to spell that because it's an unusual uh, spelling. And C H R I S T E N E, and her last name is spelled S E D A. So this article, I'm going to link it in the description underneath this video. If you want to read the article before you hear my analysis of this, you probably should pause this right now. Give me a like, give me a share. But um, I'm going to spoil it for you. <clears throat> All right. So, Christine. Um, it's a long, it's not a long story. It's a very short story. And in essence, what happens is <clears throat> she is a military um she calls, I, can't, I think she calls herself some military brat. She's never really lived for a very long time in one place um, growing up. She's always lived in a dormitory, you know, like in college or in a mobile home or in an apartment or a condo. She's never really lived in a place that is a, a home, a house, something that's got walls, and a, you know, that kind of thing that is not a temporary, you know, with a lot of other people, something on her own so apparently that has been something she's always wanted is to have an actual house and in her you know purchased it all right that's her that's her vision what ends up happening is she's a reporter she's a writer and with covid and with the uh, writer strike that happened just very recently she was out of work for a long time now she has this boyfriend his name is Austin. He sounds amazing, very romantic, at least the way she portrays it. And they are um, in a long-term relationship and they go back to his parents' home and he sees her floating around his parents' swimming pool with a shower cap on and it's raining a rainstorm and he falls in love with her and says i want to marry her so he proposes to her very romantic you know ah and then i guess that's not good enough he doesn't formally propose to her until much later and they go to alaska and she's always wanted to go to alaska and see the northern lights so they hire this photographer and they um i don't, I don't okay whatever and they guess they're going to get their pictures taken with the northern lights and the next day here comes the northern lights and then she comes outside to see the lights she's so excited and austin goes down on one knee and he proposes and i guess there's photos we don't see the photos but okay so very romantic okay that's the story fast forward she's engaged and she is going to write 
she needs to do some research on a screenplay she's working on that has to do with psychics, clairvoyance. So her friend drives her two hours out of Los Angeles to see some tarot reader who's unnamed, who is a tarot reader of the stars, psychic to the stars, somebody really amazing. So she goes in. Now, this woman, Christine, is in her 20s, and she goes in to see the psychic tarot reader. And she's going to fool the psychic tarot reader. She takes the engagement ring off of her finger and puts it in her pocket so she can't give anything away. Okay. You and I are all thinking the same thing, right? So she goes in and the tarot reader has three piles. That's typical. And says, which pile is calling you? Whatever. And she felt the middle one. So she lays her hand on the middle pile and the tarot reader turns over the card. And she looks at her and she says, You'll have a house in two years. Apparently, that's all she said at that moment. And Christine, her eyes fill with tears because she feels like the psychic has just gotten to her deepest um, need. The, the, the thing that is the biggest on her mind is purchasing a house, apparently. She says that her nose... Uh, started tingling and she was fighting back emotions trying to keep herself from giving it away too late <laughs> her eyes are full of tears and and christine thankfully is recording the reading but she says from that moment on she didn't hear anything all she heard is that the psychic knew her deepest wish was to own a house and the psychic said you will have a house in two years okay so christine goes home she sits down and she listens to the recording, which I would love to listen to. Thank you. And in the recording, we don't know anything else because she never mentions it. All she says is that this psychic knew that she would have a house in two years. All right. Two years pass. And <laughs> two years pass. And her and Austin have decided I mean, they, it sounds like they've had a very long um, relationship and, and a long engagement, at least two years. And they decide they're going to elope. They don't have any, they don't have a lot of money. They don't have a lot of um, um, expendable uh, money, especially if they lived in Los Angeles. It's uh, just incredibly difficult to, to buy a home in that area. So they decide, let's elope. Because let's not have a big wedding. We just, you know, we don't have the money. It seems like it would be a waste of money when we could probably buy a house someday and or travel or whatever it is they're going to do. Pay off for student loans is what she said she really wanted to do. And so they decide they're going to elope. They get ready to go. And she gets, a, I guess, a Google notification from her calendar. And it says, it's been two years since you... Um, spoken to that psychic about purchasing a house and she looks at the notification and she says oh my gosh we have not purchased a house it's been two years even though the psychic said i would have a house in two years but remember this is a romantic story modern love she decides christine decides that does she really need a house what she needs is a home and with austin she has found her home wherever Austin is. That is her home. And that's it. So why am I going on about this? Okay. Yes, I know it's a romantic story. And I know darn well that if she had just said, um, you know, I wanted to purchase a house and I couldn't purchase a house and Austin and I fell in love and, and I'm swimming around the swimming pool with a shower cap on and a rainstorm and he proposes, but that's not good enough. I have to have another proposal under the Northern Lights with a photographer, professional photographer, and we're in love and, and on and on and on. I had all these problems with, you know, finances and student loans. And now I'm going, if she had tried to sell that story to New York Times, they'd say, eh, you need a psychic. You need a you need a catch. You need something we can write in the headlines so that people like Susan Gerbic 
for her channel Psychics Explains will go ahead and click on the link. Okay, so I get that. She's not going to sell the story if she doesn't have this hook about the psychic. But what is in this story I really want to talk about? Because, my gosh, there's a lot. It's a short story. You read it just in a few minutes. But there's so much in this story that I think we should talk about for our channel. And I really hope you guys, you know, look at this article and leave me some of your notes. Let's think about this. Okay, this woman is extremely naive, beyond extremely. She's a 20-something-year-old um, professional woman who's a writer who thinks she's going to outsmart the psychic tarot reader of the stars that is so amazing that people will drive two hours out of Los Angeles to go see her. The celebrities go to her. And she thinks she's going to outsmart her by taking her ring off and putting it in her pocket. Give me a break. No way. I don't, these readers are not, they're not inexperienced. They have, this is their skill. This is what they do. These people have done, you know, she's probably um, does, a, you know, hundreds of readings a week. The woman, the tarot reader probably has done a thousand readings this year. And most of them are of women. And human beings, we have a lot in common. We really have a lot. Um, you know, you could take somebody from uh, Nicaragua or a person from Uzbekistan and somebody from Egypt and they're all 20 year old women. You could make a statement to them and it would probably all fit the same. You know, they would all have that same kind of a feeling of that's me. You're being very specific to me. They're called Barnum statements. And the more specific it feels, you know, it sounds, the more it feels very specific. It, okay. For example, uh, some of the ones I was talking about were, um, what would you say to a person who is in her twenties? Okay. Well, you're going to, you're going to have children. You're going to, um, I see you surrounded by children. I see you, um, holding a baby in your arms. I see you, uh, performing in front of a group of people and the people are applauding. I see you, um, in two years having a, um, a creative burst and you are able to write the thing that is on your mind like a book a story music a poem you know you i i see you see you able to do this and something that you're going to write is going to be published and it's going to be held in high esteem by people in your in your world okay these are all generic terms some other ones might be um, i see you in a very good place and with surrounded by people who love you and I see that there was a health scare and that, a, and, and that um, the, there was a miracle around you that, that came in and, 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 and uh, was all taken care of. And, but boy, it was just a chance encounter, or I see um, this love of your life that is going to be there for you, a, a tall person, and they, they love you immensely and they will, you know, okay, you see what I'm saying? So no matter where you're from, these are general statements that kind of sound specific. And what they do is they fit a lot of people. So, you know, you take a woman who's in her 60s, a woman who's in her 80s, a woman who's in her teens, we're all going to be kind of generally um, uh, fitting um, same with men, same with everybody else. Okay. So when you've done a ton of readings, which like these psychics do, you're able to make these statements and it just, they fit. Okay. So that's, that's one of the things I want to say. So also when you take a ring off your finger, especially when it's been on there for a little bit of time, it doesn't mean that there's not some indication that like a tan line or whatever that isn't going to show the um fact that she just had a ring on her finger and come on now psychics have been tried people think they're fooling the psychic by taking off a, a ring or adding a ring for years so the psychic's well aware of that and besides as far as we know the psychic said nothing about love or marriage she said nothing all she said was about a house that she would have in two years 
All right. So Christine is also extremely easy to read. And people are always saying, oh, I gave no indication. I gave no feedback to the psychic. I was stoic and or um, there's no way she could have read, read my face. Let me tell you, there's a lot of ways they can read your face. Remember, these psychics are experienced. They've done thousands of these things. They know exactly what's going on in your mind. They see you blanch. They see your ears, uh, your ears, some people's ears turn red. They see your, um, your eyes get uh, full of tears immediately. They see uh, twitches. They feel you jerk, um, you know, like in a shock. They see they see your um, your frowns or your expressions or your smiles or your anger or whatever. They can read you. It's not difficult when this is what you do for a living. This is what she does all the time. So, and she does admit, Christine admits in the story that her, that her nose starts twitching and she's trying not to react, but it was obvious. And look how emotional that was. The psyche came out with just one sentence. You'll have a house in two years. And the woman's eyes immediately filled with, with tears. See how emotional these readings are? So don't give me this BS about this is not harmful. Because come on now, this person is manipulating you. Don't get me started. Okay. So um, this... Okay, so people give away a lot. I'm, I'm reading over my notes here. The um, the psychic is not reading the cards. It has nothing to do with those cards on the table. They're just a story. They're a way of um, talking through and and um, and getting to the Barnum statements and then watching the reactions of the person. So they're looking at. They're watching your hands, your face, your eyes. You know, they're they're all looking at these things. That's what they're actually reading. And they're course correcting as they go. So if they make a statement, there's an older person that I'm seeing that's around you that has been a, a great um, mentor to you. And you're really concerned about them. And then if they see the person look really confused or like eyes starting to, you know, fill up with tears, then they kind of go that avenue. If the psychic is talking to the person and it isn't hitting, like the person really seems confused then they just move on to something else. So you course correct until you get onto the path that seems like you're able to uh, move forward with the reading. And look, if the psychic blows it and gets nothing, well, what's the big deal? It's not like the psychic knew this woman was going to write a New York Times article about the reading. They blow it sometimes and the person moves on and we never hear about it. So that's just, that's the way it is. All right. The psychic said, you will have a home in two years. No, no. She says you will have a house in two years. See, I, I messed up too. That is a physical thing. Something with walls, a kitchen, bathroom, probably a yard. We're not talking about a mobile home. We're not talking about a condo. We're talking about a house. And I'm not talking about like a little Monopoly house. This is the house. So we all know what she's talking about, right? You will have a house in two years, like you will be on the deed. You will be owning a house. That's pretty darn clear. So, um, you know, maybe inherit a house or could be she won a house. I don't know how you'd win a house, but, you know, she'll have a house in two years. Not like a renter, but it makes it sound like she will have it. So that's what the psychic said. That's what Christine wrote down. So we can only go with what her word is. And so when Christine realizes later that it's been two years, she reframes it. She says, oh, it wasn't a house that I was going to own. It was a home, a home with Austin. Okay, so give me a break. She's reframing it because she wants to reframe it. She badly wanted this to be real. And now she's just, I mean, it's so, it's so clear. She wants um, the psychic to be able to be right. She even writes it on her calendar and says, in two years, I should have a house by now. 
So obviously she, Christine really wanted this to be real. She wanted to see what would happen. Psychic failed. Uh, we do not know what else the psychic said. It could have been a ton of Barnum statements. All we know is this one specific statement. So we, it could have been a lot of things that were wrong, but we don't know. But anyway, so Christine writes it on her on her calendar. She's reminded of it. And in her mind, it's a special day because the special day is they're going to go down to the, they made the decision to elope and they go down to the, um, to the courthouse to sign the license. This isn't the marriage day. This is the day they're going to go get the license. So that seems in Christine's mind to be a very specific day that had to do with the psychic reading. But let's think about this, right? Okay. Take all the fun out of it, Susan. What is specific about that? There's nothing. I mean, they're going to go down and get their license signed. That's not any more important than their wedding day, or the day they actually go get wed, or the day they they some other event happens. Maybe she finds out she's pregnant, or they give birth, or um, they adopt a child, or they go overseas, and it's the day that they fly out, or the day that they land in this amazing vacation, or maybe it's the day that she's looking at those Northern Lights photos again, and she's remembering it, and then all of a sudden the Google notification pops up on her phone and says it's been two years, and she says, oh, look, here he's the day he proposed. That's a special day. That's that's when I, you know, the psychic must have been right. It was a home and this is the day he proposed or the day that, you know, it could be something lovely like that, or it could be something like uh, she had a near miss um, in a car accident or her family member nearly died in surgery, or it was the day that she found out her mom had, um, had cancer, or it could be the day the dog got loose and they researched in the whole neighborhood and they found their puppy and then they loved it. And they said, Oh, this is really a family that we've created, me, Austin, and the baby dog. So anything would have been relevant to for her, Christine, to be able to say, it's been two years. And I've had this realization that what the psychic said was correct. It's all about a home. It's all about the people in my life and animals that are important to me. That's what's important to us, this love that I have, the family that surrounds me, my my uh, future. Maybe I paid off my student loan today. Mm, fat chance of that. But so anything would have been relevant to Christine. So um, let me make sure I have covered everything I wanted to do. And I'm really curious if you guys put um, anything in the comments that you're thinking of. Now, I want to go again to the to what's the harm on this before I end. And I want you to think, okay, yeah, Susan's a spoil sport. What a, how annoying. It's just a love story. Get over it, Susan. But what is going on here is that this, this woman who apparently says that she's never believed in psychics. She thinks that they, that they must be uh, manipulating people. She was looking for fraud she says that in the article, and by taking off the ring, she's assuming that there's a likelihood this the psychic could be a fraud. She says she's agnostic, which is kind of like you don't believe in a god. You're not quite sure. And so probably doesn't believe in an afterlife. So I don't know why she would think that, you know, anybody could communicate with the dead. But we don't know the psychic is communicating with the dead. We just know she's doing tarot reading. So she could be just not a medium. Um, and she says that um, she's talking about how, you know, what you forget is if this, if it had been true, let's say they did buy a house within two years or were making a payment on it, you know, making a down payment to, you know, going through the paperwork to get a, um, a house or starting to look at houses or, or something of that sort. Well, she would give all credit to the psychic, right? But sometimes it is our own focus in our life. She could have said to herself, this is the psychic sees this happening in two years. I'm going to make it happen. So by hook or by crook, she's, this has been her sole goal. Maybe um, she focuses on that. She ends up getting some good loans. 
they move to some place where it's very inexpensive to buy a home. Maybe they go through some some channel that allows them to be first time home buyers. Maybe she inherits a home. Maybe they buy a fixer upper. It could be completely because of her and Austin's dedication to making this happen. Because you said, she said it's this is her life goal is to have this home, have a house. So maybe, maybe she's not going to give herself credit. So kind of like a placebo effect, you know, where the magic feather that Dumbo gives is given that says you can fly because you have the feather and that you make it happen yourself. So, you know, she's giving credit away to this psychic or this other realm who's actually uh, telling her that this is going to happen. But really what it is, is just her own, her own hard work, maybe chance, luck, sometimes uh, to get these to happen. So the problem with this is, is that women, mostly women, um, are reading these kinds of articles that are fluffy fairy tale kind of stuff. And a lot of people will see this as the psychic predicted it. The psychic predicted it just from the headline kind of thing. Remember the headline of this article, article is the psychic who predicted my romantic future. Well, she didn't, she didn't say anything about romance. So she reframes it that way. Christine reframes it that way. One of the problems is, is that this is, um, you're, you're romanticizing this and, and from the perspective of other people who are, um, fall for this it's it's like you know wordplay and tricks and you doing it to your own self um this women will continue to shell out money for this they will continue to fall for this they want to find the same love and home whatever that christine had and when you're in grief or you're lonely or you're ill or you have money problems and you're just confused and you don't have great mentors or people to advise you sometimes these people will turn to a psychic and stories like this just help that happen more likely to want somebody to go to a psychic and once you're in the psychic scripts there could be um they could be manipulated and taken advantage of and it becomes a problem even bigger problem um and then the harms also, the psychic could have said to her, I see you um, having, uh, giving birth. I see you pregnant. I see, not just a baby in your arms, because that could be anything. <clears throat> so your friend's baby. But if she said, I see you pregnant. Um, and then ends up finding out that this woman is, she ends up finding out she's infertile. She will never be pregnant. Or... Maybe she says, I see you and your love, your this Austin person, this man you're with now. This is the one. He will be with you forever. You will have this loving, wonderful relationship. And then two years later, she finds out that Austin has left her for her best friend. You know, he's just scum of the earth and she's, you know. So <laughs> you're maybe then maybe what's going to happen is because the psychic told her you're going to get pregnant then she continues trying and you know these treatments very expensive she doesn't want to adopt because the psychic told her she's going to be pregnant uh, or she sticks with this guy who's bad for her and he's a difficult person and they're not right for each other she sticks with him because the psychic said we will be soulmates and we'll be together forever and he will always love you and he's the one you know and she sticks with him because that's what the psyche told her instead of getting the heck out of there or seeing the red flags. So I know this has been a long story, but the point is life is complicated and psychics make it more complicated. And I hope that Christine and Austin have a wonderful life together and she finds a home with him, maybe gets a puppy or a kitten or something, you know, I don't know, but I hope they have a good life, but I really hope that she stops seeing psychics and, this, you know, come on, New York Times and the Washington Post does the same thing. It worked. I mean, they put out this headline. I clicked on it here. I'm talking about it. You guys might even read the article. I'm probably going to write this up for Skeptical Inquirer. It, it's so frustrating, you guys. 
because there's more harm in these stories than you realize. And yeah, I know I'm okay being the bad guy in this. It's my role in life to ruin all the suck, all the fun out of everything. I never get invited to parties because, you know, it's no fun being a skeptic. Anyway, like and share. Thanks, everybody.